you who do tweeting and social media and all of that kind of thing, it would be uh, very helpful if you uh, do that because I think this deserves much more than two performances. And I think it will be... Okay. Right. Um, so, I'm just going to tell you who is on the platform in case you don't know. I think you know everything about Jackie, so I'm not going to introduce her. Um, everybody knows everything about Ken Loach. Um, so also, I'm not going to introduce him. Uh, not everybody knows Professor Jonathan Rosenhead, who is a professor at LSE. He's vice chair of free speech on uh, Israel, and he's chair of one part of the Hackney CLP. So he's in a very good position to be a commentator on some of what we've heard tonight. I just want to start by quoting a few people uh, more distinguished than uh, me and in a different field from uh, anybody on the, on the platform. We all know that racism, misogyny, xenophobia, Islamophobia and anti-Semitism are rife and they're particularly rife because they're coming out of the White House at the rate of knots yeah. on the dreaded social media. <laughs> and everything that happened after Charlottesville, I think, was a wake-up call, not just to America, but to all of us, of how keen sections of America, but also of our country, are to go back to battles that we thought we had closed off in the popular struggles of the last bits of the 20th century. I just want to mention two bits of Islamophobia uh, that show what a weird world we're in. Not all of you will have seen the Facebook post of the son of uh, the Israeli president, which was a completely grotesque caricature of George Soros. It was taken down, but not before it had been much retweeted by uh, the former head of the Ku Klux Klan. At the same time, in Europe, among the weird things that are happening is that all over Hungary, there are billboards of George Soros. And the, it's, it's an appeal to Hungarians not to let George Soros get away with wanting refugees and immigrants to be allowed into Europe. Um, the result of that billboard program was to increase anti-Semitism in Hungary in a very frightening way. I want to quote somebody who I wish he was on the platform, but I've got his very words, and I've been on more platforms with him um, on this uh, subject. Uh, the former High Court judge, Sir Stephen Sedley, who many of you may know. I think this is a good starting point for some of the discussions that we're likely to have. Anti this is his quote. Anti-Semitism is hostility towards Jews as Jews where it manifests itself in discriminatory acts or inflammatory speech, it is generally legal, lying beyond the bounds of freedom of speech and of action. And I want to highlight a new book, East West Road, which many of you may have read, on the origins of genocide and crimes of humanity. This is by the lawyer, another lawyer, Philippe Sands. This is a meticulous documenting of anti-Semitism <coughs> in the 1930s, which is what brought us to the Holocaust, which brought us to Nuremberg, and which brought us to the international architecture that was the International Universal Declaration of Human Rights. This was how serious anti-Semitism was in the 30s. And anyone who hasn't read that book 
it's long, it's a rattling good read, and I think it's a complete wake-up call to where we are now. So back to Stephen, he went on to say, he is, by the way, himself Jewish, criticism and equally defense of Israel or of Zionism is not only generally lawful, it is affirmatively protected by the law. And I wanted to use this very loyally way of putting it. And he noted that endeavors to conflate these two by characterizing everything except extremely anodyne criticism of Israel as anti-Semitic. It's not new. But as he said, what is new is that our government and the Labour Party have endorsed this conflation. Now, these, the IHRA definition, and specifically the annexes to that, have become a weapon in the political struggle against Jeremy Corbyn's leadership of the Labour Party. And what we've seen, even before we saw it so graphically shown to us tonight, is the kind of witch hunt and hysteria that comes from social media programs, but also from the sloppy, careless lack of analysis in the mainstream media, and also the lack of courage in the mainstream media and among many of our politicians. Some of them, I'm sure, signed this declaration in good faith because they were too busy to have taken in what it was really about. But I want Stephen Sedley to be in our minds when we think about this <coughs> issue. So his way of putting it is so different from the passion of Jackie's, but actually, <laughs> it's exactly the same. So, I want, first of all, <coughs> to warmly congratulate you on an amazing performance. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I'm going to start by asking Ken for his reaction to the evening as far as it's got, and then Jonathan, and then we'll talk a little bit to, to Jackie, and then I'm quite sure there are many, many hands are about to go up, and please remember what I said about the two-minute uh, rule in your interventions. So Ken, can I come to you? <laughs> um, yes, well, um, I thought it was uh, terrific, like I think most of us here did. I thought it was funny and perceptive and a really gutsy performance and well done Jackie. I'm really pleased to have come. I think you're, the, um, the, the way of putting it as uh, the, the, the defense for your, your mother was, um, was terrific and very funny and beautifully done and sharp but also nailed all the issues in the way you did it. I think that's terrific. Um, I think what it does, it opens up uh, the whole subject. It opened, it, it, has, it affirms the principle that history belongs to all of us. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you don't have to belong to one race or one background to have a view on history. History is our, is our collective strength. Mm -hmm. And understanding it and fighting for the truth of it is fundamental to our politics. Um, if I remember Milan Kundera correctly, he talks about the, the struggle of memory against forgetting. And the struggle of our memory has to be collective. And we rely on historians, we rely on our, our friends and our comrades and those who share our same basic principles to, to go into the corners that other people are for their own purposes, are not wanting to discuss. Mm -hmm. And, and it, it's part of labor <coughs> history, it's part of working class history, it's part of colonial history, it's part of the history of the ruling class and what they have done through the ages. As Jackie says, it's part of its uh, 
history of slavery. Um, was it Gordon Brown who said we've got to stop apologising for the empire? <laughs> no, Gordon, you are going to tell the truth about the empire. <laughs> now we start apologising for it. So, yes, we, it, and, and what Jackie has done in her way is to say this subject is open for discussion. Mm -hmm. From the very beginning, from the right from the start, from the founding of Israel <coughs> and the, the way in which it was founded and its, its intention from the beginning, which becomes clearer and clearer as the decades go past. Mm. Yeah. That's up for discussion and it's not anti-Semitic to say so. It's part of our collective history. And that's the great achievement of Jackie. Mm. And well done, Jackie. Mm. I'd just like to start by saying there is a, a new organization that's launching at the Labour Party conference uh, in 10 days' time, which is called Jewish Voice for Labour. And Stephen Sedley will be one of the headline speakers. The other one will be our Professor Abish Lyon from Oxford. And these are both Jewish speakers who support very much the arguments that Jackie has dramatically made th this evening. Um, I was very struck with the question she asked in the voice of her mother, Dorothy. Uh, why are they doing this to Jackie? Uh, why are they chasing after her? Why are they trying to make her look so bad? Um, and I think the, uh, we have the answers from Jackie. We, we understand why they are doing that in terms of the, the politics of Britain, the politics of Israel and Palestine. Um, throughout the story, racism runs like a thread. Um, from her arrival in Deptford, from those very first stories, we see that this has been a racist society, and some aspects of it have, have got better over the years. And I think that didn't just happen, it was made to happen by people campaigning on it. Um, I was very struck by one racist uh, I, um, aspect, which was that I think when Jackie started to become in the public eye, I'm sure you were in the public eye before I was aware of it, but when I became aware of it, um, there, there were stuff in the Jewish press saying she can't possibly be Jewish, she's obviously black. Yeah. <laughs> that, there was racism, of course, in that. Now, I found it much easier to believe that Jackie was Jewish because actually, and I've never said this to you, you look just like my grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> and indeed have some of the same mannerisms. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, you're, you're actually not the first person, including my partner, who's sitting over there in Jewish, who has told me that I look more Jewish than most people he knows who are Jewish. I was also struck by the fact that your, fa your father's name was Jack Cohen, and of course that is also the name of the founder of Tesco. So this is... <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think it's important to understand that the campaign again, the campaign to silence Jackie was, was had nothing personal in it. People uh, are not talking, targeting Jackie as Jackie. They're targeting because she's useful to them in the, in their campaign. It's part of a general campaign, as as you say, it's about Jeremy Corbyn. <laughs> uh, that's what it's all about, uh, because he has been a supporter of Palestine. 